What we're going to look at now is particle scattering, the distance of closest approach, the Fermi radius, and the density of the nucleus. Now you need to be able to explain how the radii of nuclei can be estimated from charged particle scattering experiments. You know you have an alpha particle and you have like let's say a gold nucleus. You fire that alpha particle which is positive against the gold nucleus which is positive and it goes into the atom and it will be re repelled by the positive nucleus. Something like this. It gets repelled there. We have what's called the distance of closest approach. And this is what we need to find out. Now, to look at this, we have to consider the energies that are involved. It starts off with high kinetic energy and zero potential energy. As it approaches the nucleus, it slows down, which means the kinetic energy gets smaller and the potential energy, the electrostatic potential energy increases. So it when it's at the point of closest approach, the kinetic energy will be zero, the potential energy will be a maximum. Now let's say you've used 100 volts to give the uh, kinetic energy to the alpha particle. Let's say you give 100 volts to the alpha particle. The energy is going to be 100 volts times by the charge, which is two times the fundamental charge and you know that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, so it's going to be two lots of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times by 100. So we have 100 volts times by two times the charge, and you know that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, so we end up with 3.2 times 10 to the minus 17 joules, and this will be converted into the potential energy. So the kinetic energy loss will be the potential energy gained. And then we know that the potential energy is equal to KQQ over R. So we need to rearrange that to get R. And then we find the distance of closest approach. So let's say we have 5 million volts, which are used to accelerate the other particle towards the gold nucleus. These are the equations for the potential energy and kinetic energy, but we're interested in this one in particular. What do we know? We know that the, the constant is k which is 9 times 10 to the 9. The first charge is 79 electron units. Uh, there's 79 times the fundamental charge. Q2 is 2 times the fundamental charge. R is the distance of closest approach. The kinetic energy is basically lost and that's what's turned into potential energy. So we have uh, 5 million volts times by 2 times the electron charge because we uh, have a, another particle which is 2 plus 2 um, fundamental charges and we end up with, a, with an energy of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. Now the kinetic energy is converted into potential energy. This is the equation where this is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 12 joules, that's the energy that we have. And this is KQ1, Q2 divided by R. We rearrange to make R the subject. R is equal to K times by 79E. The 79E is the charge on the gold nucleus. This is the charge on the alpha particle divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 12. We work that through and we end up with a value of 22.7 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. So this is basically how close this alpha particle will get to the nucleus. Now the question is, how close can it actually get? Well, basically, you need to have uh, 20 times as much voltage to get that to happen. So it doesn't actually really get so close to the nucleus. So we need to look at the Fermi radius and nuclear density. Now, R0 is the radius of one nucleon, basically. It's basically how big a nucleon can be without um, being uh, without another nucleon going into it. So this is basically the radius of the nucleon. And it's called the Fermi radius, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. Now the volume of a nucleon, let's take it as being a cube, is this value cubed. So if you have A nucleons, you're going to have A times as much volume. So it's going to be A R naught cubed. 
Now, what is the volume of this going to be? Uh, the new volume, which is related to r cubed, is going to be a r naught cubed. So, if we cube root both sides, we get the radius. So, the radius of the nucleus will be a, which is the uh, number of nucleons in the nucleus, to the third root times by the Fermi radius. And in fact, this is the uh, formula in the data booklet. Now, if you want to find the density of nucleus, you know that the density is mass divided by volume. And this is what we'll look at the next slide. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. Find the density of a hydrogen nucleus. You know the mass of a proton is uh, 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. The Fermi radius is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 50 meters. 1.20 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. And from that, and from that, you can work out that the density will be approximately 2 times 10 to the 17 kilograms per meter cubed, which is a huge density. It's the density roughly of a neutron star, which is basically one nucleon next to the other.